goose town got its name because of the geese that were down here as the German immigrants had their little their little farms and they had their geese and stuff down along the river. So it's uh, a little piece of history that some of the people don't really think about. So they just say, well, where's Goose Town? Well, everybody in town knows where Goose Town is because they just go point, go down to the river. You're going to run into it. There's no special markers or nothing on it other than uh, the Goose Town here now is our, our Gurgia the Goose, which was uh, donated by Dr. Ann Vogel. Uh, she has a little story that she put together about Gurgia the Goose, but uh, this marks Goose Town. This is Goose Town. You'll find that some of the places down here, some of the houses down here, they all have they have uh, uh, a goose sitting out in their front yard as part of their decorations. You get the ceramic geese and some of that and have that as part of their decorations uh, with their house. There's a 52 and a half acre island in the Minnesota River. The only island that's that size that's completely surrounded by the Minnesota River in the valley that I know of and I happen to own it. Uh, I haven't done anything with the island right now. Uh, I'm enjoying sitting back, paying my taxes for it, and just saying to people, well, I own an island in the middle of Minnesota River. Do you own one? And uh, that's the way it's going right now. I, eventually, uh, I'm going to have to make up my mind as to what we're going to do with the island. I don't know if we're going to be getting, uh, selling it to the DNR or selling it to the federal DNR or whatever we're going to do with it. That hasn't been decided yet. I've got some guys that are bugging me terribly heavy. They want to buy it for hunting ground. and. Uh, if they want hunting around, I can just go sit here and look at it and let them hunt it anyhow. Because they're going to hunt it whether I say whether I say yes or no, they're going to hunt it. And whether they own it or I own it, they're still going to hunt it. And then is that what your family mostly used it for? When, when uh, at the time, it, it, had wood, it, had wood, it had wood on it. I mean, if they wanted wood for the house, they'd go down to, onto the island and make wood for the house. They brought the wood up from down there so they could have wood to heat the house. Uh, that was part of the reason why you wanted woodlots uh, down uh, close to home or relatively close to home. Uh, they would just go down with the horses and get to cut the wood and drag the, drag the wood up here with the horses and then make the wood and heat the house. Uh, the 97 flood, the river valley was completely full from here all the way across to the highway. So the river was about two miles wide right through here with the water flowing that way. Uh, there was one year where we had turkeys, we, had, we had, didn't get the manure out and fall out of our turkey barn and uh, the flood came through and it broke the back door of the bar of, my, of our turkey barn loose and, all the, uh, and the barn was perfectly clean by the time the flood was done. The flood took every bit of that turkey manure pack, floated it out and got our neighbors mad because it wound up in their land and they had to smell it all summer. But, uh, you know, it's living here in the, in the bottom, it, it's, it's a joy to be able to look out and look at the river and look at everything and enjoy nature. It's one of the reasons I like living be a river rat. I like living down here. And uh, that's one of the reasons because I've got my nature around me. I've got everything around me that I, that I like, that I enjoy. But right now, in, in, a, normal, in a normal year, you have to go down to here in order to get into the flood water. <laughs> the area right here would be considered 800 feet above sea level. It would be right in through here, 800 feet above sea level. If it gets up to 804, 803, 804, uh, then I start getting nervous because the river itself gets back up against my building. And when it starts getting against my buildings, I've got about uh, $100,000 worth of cars and campers and stuff stored in my, in my turkey barn over there. And uh, I want to get them out before the flood gets to them. But uh, this, would be a norm, this would be a normal river. This year the river flooded this far up, which was 800, 800 and a half, 800, 800, 800 feet above sea level. The river was up into this area here. Uh, People have always wondered why I don't bring the cattle back down. Uh, my brother used to bring cattle down every year. Uh, I'm getting to the point where we need some green grass to handle what the people put on their lawns to keep their lawns looking pretty. We've got to have some way to filter this fertilizer before it gets into the river. 
I mean, the river is the river is a lot cleaner now than what it used to be 20 years or 10 years ago, 20 years ago. The river is a lot cleaner now than what it was then. But uh, you have to start cleaning the river up somewhere. You got to start at the stop. You got to clean it at where it where it begins. We're up at up at Browns Valley, where the river starts up at Browns Valley. You got to start cleaning up everything between there and here before we can say that we've got a clean river here, because all the all the uh, stuff that comes out through the through the uh, sewage systems and the and the uh, personal septic tanks and stuff like that, that all has to get cleaned up before it gets down to here. You don't really have a perfectly good pristine river until you get that all taken care of, so that's all gone. So uh, there's going to be many many years of, of people doing things different in order to keep the in order to get the river clean.